What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about when should you expect intermittent fasting to start working. Now, there is a lot of misconceptions, or there are a lot of misconceptions about intermittent fasting, especially when people are anticipating uh, how the weight loss is going to work. When are they going to experience all of this stuff? So I'm going to go ahead and touch on that in this video, as this seems to be a point of concern for some people. Now, I'm going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. When it comes to intermittent fasting, especially when it comes to the weight loss portion of it, I feel like there may be some kind of a disconnect or confusion or understanding of what are the actual benefits in terms of the weight loss when it comes to intermittent fasting. What am I getting? What is what is what am I getting for my effort of doing intermittent fasting? I think a lot of people have many misconceptions out there because of so much information uh, that many people put out on intermittent fasting specifically. Now there are those videos where people experienced it on their own and tell their story. And I think those videos are great for that anecdote of what they went through and their success, but it can create confusion when it comes to the actual scientific evidence of intermittent fasting. When it comes to weight loss, intermittent fasting specifically isn't going to change much in terms of weight loss. Now, I know this might sound confusing to a lot of people in this channel. We talk aggressively about intermittent fasting, but you have to understand that intermittent fasting is not a weight loss system. It's not a system that, that kind of changes thermodynamics in terms of calories in versus calories out. Intermittent fasting is a fat loss system. Now, hopefully that doesn't confuse you because weight loss and fat loss are not one and the same. Weight loss consists of so many different elements. Weight loss consists of muscle, consists of water weight, consists of glycogen buildup, consists of glycogen release, consists of body fat, consists of the things that you eat during the day and the weight of that and consists of sodium. There are many elements that can actually determine weight loss. Now, if you're, if you're going into it just focusing on the weight loss, you might come out of it unsatisfied because not everyone's the same. Not everyone's going to release all of that water at specific points when someone else did. So if the only metric that you are focusing on is the number on the scale, you're either going to be setting yourself up for failure or you're going to be setting yourself up maybe for a false indication of being satisfied with what you see on the scale. And, and one thing with intermittent fasting is when you first start, just because of the, the bone structure of what intermittent fasting is, just because of the systematic, uh, 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 just because of the systematic setup of intermittent fasting, your first week, your first two weeks are going to be amazing for weight loss because glycogen contains water and contains weight. So when you release glycogen, which is what intermittent fasting actually helps you do because since you aren't getting food, the, cal the glycogen storage starts to release so that your body can use the glucose because that's what your body prefers. Your body will always try to choose glucose over ketones. So if you have glucose and you have it stored and they're attached to your muscle or what have you, your body will use that glycogen storage and release it, which means that the water attached to the glycogen will also release and you have glycogen all over your body. Your body intelligently stores it in case there is a lack of glycogen coming in. So then it uses that glycogen, releases all of the water attached to that glycogen. So now the weight of the glycogen is released from your body and you'll start to see these massive weight loss periods in the beginning, first week, second week. Now, 
then it starts to slow down. As your body starts to get closer to your actual weight, removing that glycogen buildup. So now you're closer to your weight. The closer you are to your true body weight, the more realistic the weight loss will be on the scale. If you go to sleep and wake up and you've lost five pounds, what do you think those five pounds came from? If, if body fat Roughly, this is a rough estimate. We don't know for sure, but this is a rough F estimate. If body fat, if one pound of body fat is about 3,500 calories, you have to times that by five. Were you at a 3,500 times five calorie deficit for the day, which is impossible. Essentially, even if you don't eat, you're not at that calorie deficit for the day. Were you at that, were you that aggressive? You would have to not eat and do a hundred miles in like 30 minutes just running or something like some crazy amount of calorie burn while not eating you didn't have that deficit how did you lose five pounds you have to think about that you have to physically think even if you don't want to believe the science and you don't want to hear anything because you just believe one thing or you just believe the other thing think about that did you lose that much in body fat you probably did not, but it was exciting to see those five pounds come off the scale. The problem happens when you get that exciting feeling of that weight loss, and then you see a slowdown period or even a halt, and then you think, it's over. Everything I'm doing, I did it, it doesn't work. And even if it goes back a little bit, that is like the worst thing in the world because you're not understanding that that one metric is too varied to actually give you an accurate understanding of what's going on with intermittent fasting. Now, when I talk about weight loss versus fat loss, I want you to know that you can lose fat, you can be losing fat and even still gaining weight because fat loss and weight loss are not the same thing. What intermittent fasting does, I'm not gonna go into the entire process of it, but what it does, because it converts your body into fatty acid energy by converting that into ketones, because of that process, you are burning more fat than you are anything else. It's partitioning the calorie burn to be very specific on the energy substrate. Instead of using amino acids and using muscle or releasing glycogen or all these different things, your body is focusing itself because you've depleted the glycogen and you don't have any sugar coming in, any glucose coming in, your body is focusing itself on burning body fat because that's what it uses to convert to ketone bodies. It's because the body uses fatty acids to, pro, to create ketone bodies in the liver is the reason why you are focusing your energy burn on body fat. Intermittent fasting helps you focus your weight loss on fat loss. So although weight loss is varied, intermittent fasting is very focused on burning body fat because of glucose deprivation. Because you don't have glucose coming in, your body has to create glucose. So please understand that that does not mean that you will constantly see the weight loss on the scale. And fat loss is a little takes a little bit longer to actually remove. Remember, roughly, roughly, 3,500 calories of body fat is one pound. So that has to be chipped away. Now, it's, fat, it's gonna be faster with intermittent fasting because it's very focused, as opposed to a, a different diet that may uh, pull from muscle and pull some from glycogen, and because you're consistently creating glycogen stores, it uses a lot of the glycogen that you have and only really kind of taps into it uh, sparingly, probably when you're sleeping or during times of not eating, but then once you eat again, you replenish the glycogen. Because of all of this start, stop, start, stop, you're not, as focused at, at burning the body fat as you are with intermittent fasting. So I want you to understand that what when intermittent fasting starts working is immediately. It, it starts working. Uh, it, it starts working biologically uh, during that metabolic switchover or during that post-absorptive range, which just means you no longer have glycogen for the body to pull from. So the body does this switchover and then starts using uh, body fat for fuel. That's when it starts working on, a, on an intraday level. When does it start working on an intra-week, intra-month, intra-year level is 
at all times. It is always working. You are always focusing your body on burning body fat in a compounding element every day as you fast for 16 hours or as you fast for 20 hours or as you fast for 23 hours. You're always creating that metabolic switchover, which is helping you focus the burn on the body fat specifically. And so if you're looking at someone else and you're thinking to yourself, well, this person lost a bunch of weight, I'm not losing that weight. This person lost, this person lost a bunch of weight, I'm not losing that weight. There are so many different variables for why that specific person lost all that weight and you are not losing the weight the way that person did. How tall are they? How much do they actually weigh? It's not one for one. Don't think that because you're 300 pounds and you lost 20 pounds, that you're just going to continue to lose 20 pounds because that's what you lost and then you're thinking <clears throat> and then you're thinking oh in two months i'll be this weight because i'm just i'm losing 20 pounds consistently that's going to stop the more you reduce weight the less weight that you'll actually lose but you can get confused because you might have lost a good portion of body fat uh in the beginning a little bit of glycogen but then the next week you lost a smaller portion of body fat, but you, you released a lot of water because maybe you consumed more potassium and you had less sodium or you're drinking more water. So you're releasing more water and then you're really and then you're just thinking about the scale, but you're not thinking about all of those elements that can cause that weight to come off the scale. So if you want to be even more focused on your body fat, buy some body fat calipers. I'm not even, I don't even make any money from any body fat caliper company at all. Just go on Amazon, they're super uh, uh, cheap, and just get like a, a $20 or $15 body fat caliper uh, to use so that you can measure your actual body fat. And focus yourself off of that metric than anything else. When you're putting on clothes, do they feel tighter or do they feel looser? Because if they feel looser, you're losing body fat even if you've gained weight on the scale. If you look in the mirror, if you see your face, if, if you see pictures from a month ago and you compare them to pictures from today, if you have a picture from a month ago, take a picture in that exact frame or, or whatever you did in terms of how you looked at the camera and then see if there's a difference. If you see a difference, even if the weight is going up or not even going down, you've lost body fat. Body fat can be lost under the scale. Body fat can literally be lost while not seeing the effects of the body fat being lost on the scale itself. And you can lose body fat in your face and that can and that cannot be even one pound. You can lose body fat around your stomach and that can still not be one pound. That's the things that you have to think about. So to answer the question, it starts immediately, but you can't get bogged down in the simplicity of just looking at the scale reduce. I hope this video has helped you guys. And of course, as always, I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon. And I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here. And as always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!